you. Good afternoon, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Megan Hamner, and I'm the second year pediatric infectious diseases fellow over at Children's Mercy. And I will also be talking about antibiotics, but in a different manner. So today, I'm happy to share with you all my quality improvement project entitled Improving Skin and Soft Tissue Infection Antibiotic Duration Concordance with National Guidelines in Pediatric Urgent Care Clinics. We can go to the next slide. So why is this project in antibiotic duration important? Well, there was a surveillance study of ambulatory prescribing practices across the country that was recently published that revealed that almost 40% of all pediatric antibiotic prescriptions exceed guideline recommended durations. And this matters because we know that prolonged antibiotic use increases the risk of adverse drug events and the development of resistant organisms, which are things that we really don't want to happen for our patients. And this is particularly important when considering skin and soft tissue infections because they are the second most common diagnosis leading to pediatric antibiotic prescriptions after all of the respiratory diagnoses. Next slide, please. And because skin and soft tissue infections are so common, there are treatment guidelines put out by the Infectious Diseases Society of America. And the current guidelines actually recommend only five to seven days of oral antibiotics for common skin infections, including empatigo, erysipelas, cellulitis, and abscesses. And these are all things we see very frequently in pediatrics. And nationally, that surveillance data that I mentioned on the previous slide showed that 75 to 90% of pediatric patients end up receiving greater than seven days of antibiotics for these skin infections, which is a pretty significant proportion. And so we were curious how our prescribing practices compared and found that in Children's Mercy urgent care clinics, only about 58% of patients were receiving the recommended five to seven days of antibiotics per the IDSA guidelines. And so we aimed to increase the percentage of patients receiving that recommended five to seven days of antibiotics for skin and soft tissue infections from 58% to 75% by December 31st of this year. Next slide. So in order to do this, we formed a multidisciplinary team, including urgent care physicians, advanced nursing providers and nurses, infectious diseases physicians, a data analysis, and a pharmacist. And we started meeting regularly that the best way of addressing kind of these prolonged antibiotic durations was to really understand and determine what factors, if any exist would prompt an urgent care provider to prescribe a longer duration for a patient. And so in order to assess for these factors, we sent out an anonymous red cap survey to all urgent care providers. And this 22 question survey assessed various things, um, but importantly, it assessed provider comfort level with diagnosing and treating skin infections assessed what their typical go-to antibiotic duration was for each of the common infections, um, what factors would prompt them to prescribe a longer duration, and we also assessed how comfortable they would be with prescribing a, a shorter five-day antibiotic course for common infections. We had 27 out of 50 providers respond, and that gave us a, about a 54% response rate, which we were pretty happy with. And over here on the right, you can see a Pareto chart displaying the most commonly reported factors that do prompt uh, providers to prescribe a longer antibiotic duration. Um, there was quite a range. There were some that didn't even make it onto the graph, but these are the most common ones with the presence of systemic symptoms um, being the one most reported. Next slide, please. In reviewing the remainder of the survey data, um, we found that the majority of providers typically prescribe between seven to 10 days for most skin and soft tissue infections, which is longer than what is recommended in the IDSA guidelines. And so this kind of confirmed to us that there was room for improvement and that we, we had the potential to really improve things with this project. Next slide, please. Um, and in reviewing specifically the provider comfort level with shorter durations, we did find that up to 26 of 
percent of providers would be uncomfortable with providing a shorter duration for some infections, specifically uh, abscesses and erysipelas, um, conditions that providers kind of considered a little bit, little bit deeper. And you can see those percentages, percentages here in the table. So once we had that survey information, we sat down as a group and performed a cause and effect analysis to identify additional root causes that contribute to longer antibiotic durations. And you can see this here on our fishbone diagram. Additional things that we really focused on was the urgent care environment in and of itself, because there's a lack of follow-up and a quick patient turnover, as well as technology, uh, because the electronic medical record does have default prescription links in it. And so we thought that was an area for intervention. Next slide, please. So from there, we developed our measures and our data collection tools. So our outcome measure is the percentage of patients seen in urgent care clinics receiving five to seven days of uh, antibiotics for skin and soft tissue infections. And our process measure was looking at the number of updated prescriptions used from the skin and soft tissue infection prescription folder that is available for urgent care and emergency department providers to use. Our balancing measure was the number of patients returning with a skin and soft tissue infection within 14 days of the initial visit, because we wanted to ensure that our interventions were not increasing treatment failure rates. And in order to collect our data, we built an automatic monthly report, which pulled all urgent care encounters um, that were encoded with one of 50 different ICD-10 codes for these common infections. And we also gathered data on which antibiotic was used, the dose, the duration, and whether there was a return visit or not. Next slide, please. So once we had our cause and effect analysis, our measures, and our data collection tool established, we developed a driver diagram to identify the key drivers that would affect accomplishing our aim, as well as the interventions we felt would affect the key drivers, um, which you can see here. Next slide, please. And then we had a very um, engaged group. And so we had lots of additional interventions that we brainstormed, which you can see kind of listed here on the pick chart. And um, so we did place them on a pick chart to help us choose the interventions that we felt would provide the highest impact with the lowest effort. Next slide, please. And based on the pick chart, we felt that at our first plan, do, study, act, or PDSA treatment recommendations at urgent care division meetings. This also gave us the opportunity to address any specific concerns provider had regarding shorter treatment courses and potential for treatment failure. And then our second PDSA cycle was to update the prescription order sentences in the electronic medical record for the antibiotics most commonly used for skin and soft tissue infections. We also then organized them to be displayed from shortest to longest duration, um, kind of to make it easier for providers to pick the shorter duration. And we also um, plan to update the skin and soft tissue infection prescription folder that I had previously mentioned. Next slide, please. So moving into our results, this is our annotated run chart. So um, as a reminder, our baseline before starting the project was 58%, and you can see that with the orange dashed line, and our goal was 75% up there at the gray dashed line. When our group formed um, in April 2020, shortly afterwards, we actually saw an increase in the percentage of patients receiving five to seven days, um, up to 68%, although this was not sustained. And we believe that this was secondary kind of to word of mouth regarding the development of the project and increased awareness of um, the recommended antibiotic duration. The provider survey was sent out in July of 2020, and we again saw an increase in the percentage of patients receiving five to seven days, although again, this was not, not sustained. And again, we also feel that the, the survey kind of had kind of prompted providers to think about, oh, maybe a shorter duration is, is okay. Uh, next slide, please. Our educational updates for PDSA cycle one were provided to one urgent care each month, with the first occurring in October of 2020, 
and the last occurring in December of 2020. And during this intervention, the percentage of patients receiving five to seven days increased to our goal of 75%. The updated order sentences for PDSA number two uh, went live in February of 2021. And um, we updated the two most common antibiotics prescribed, um, which is um, uh, cefazolin and clindamycin. And we saw an increase in the percentage of patients receiving five to seven days um, to 80%. And that has, as you can see, be, been sustained thus far. Next slide, please. So using QI methodology, we were able to increase the percentage of patients receiving five to seven days of antibiotics for skin and soft tissue infections in our urgent cares from 58% to 80%. And most importantly, we did not see an increase in the number of patients returning with skin and soft tissue infections, which you know, should be reassuring that shorter antibiotic durations do not increase treatment failure rates. Next slide, please. So in conclusion, prior to this project, like I said, only 58% of children were receiving the recommended antibiotic duration for skin and soft tissue infections. We were able to use QI methodology um, to attain our goal of 75% and actually even greater than our goal um, to 80% of patients receiving the recommended antibiotic duration. We do have additional PDSA cycles, um, including providing direct provider feedback, uh, the development of a treatment algorithm, and we have plans, plans for sustained education. And our future goal is to hopefully expand this project into either the emergency department or the primary care clinics. And we also hope that our work with skin and soft tissue infections will allow us to expand antibiotic stewardship efforts to other common infectious diagnoses. Next slide, please. So these are my references. There are quite a few, so I figured people would want to check them out. Um, and I want to end by really thanking everyone involved in my project. There is no way it would have been as successful without their, um, their support. So thank you very much, and I am happy to answer any questions. Um, I have a question. If we could go back to the slide that shows the um, percentage increase in, um, yes, this one. Um, and I had a question. The project, mm -hmm. the project started when? So we officially started meeting as a group in April of 2020. April of 2020, that's what I thought. Um, so there, there, there appeared to be an upward trend line mm -hmm. for prescription patterns before that. Did you do any analysis to determine if there was a change in that trend line after the project um, was implemented? Yeah, so um, uh, we did absolutely notice that there was this upward trend uh, even before we started the project. We actually have a time series analysis um, un occurring right now. We're pulling the data for it um, to see exactly what the, the cause of this increase was, but we're suspicious that it's due to previous uh, antibiotic um, stewardship interventions. Um, there have been several that we have rolled out over the years, including the development of the outpatient um, antibiotic handbook, as well as we do cookie rounds um, to the urgent cares. And so we feel that those most likely caused this trend over time. Um, but even with the trend over time, we only had 58% of patients receiving the recommended duration. Um, so I think our project really helped kind of give the additional push. Okay, great. There is, there are a number of questions in the chat window, so I'm going to give you those in order. Yeah. Um, so from Nick Clark, I really like your, that your team used a step wedge design and rollout of PDSA number one. It would be interesting to see the results also presented with step wedge framework for urgent care. Um, these approaches are utilized for a number of different reasons. Can you describe your team's decision to use this approach? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we um, decided to use this approach um, it was kind of twofold. So we did actually initially think it would it would be best to address all the urgent cares kind of at once. Um, but due to 
kind of all of the chaos of the pandemic, instead of having large um, every urgent care division meetings, they had kind of moved towards doing um, specific, like Blue Valley had an, their own urgent care division meeting, Northland had their own urgent care meeting, and it just became easier to attend um, one per month. And I think it was helpful because a lot of providers actually had really great input and questions um, that, that helped frame um, other portions of the project. And I think that that might have been like that, that communication might have been lost if we had done it um, kind of all at once. So I think the stepwise approach really, really worked out well for us. Great. Um, and then from Dr. Jeff Hackman, great project and thanks for sharing your work. When you updated the prescription order sentences in the EMR, did you change to age specific order sentences? So prescribers are only presented with the options relevant to the child um, they're seeing, or perhaps maybe it was already set that way. So great question. We did not change um, the age specifically, but we did have it filtered um, kind of by, by weight. So the different options like um, liquid and, and like tablets, we had those, we, we kind of, I wish I actually had it to show you um, how we kind of organized it. Um, but we, so we had it filter um, by, by patient weight and by max dosing um, from shortest to longest duration. We did not, um, a, we did not address the age in that. Great, yeah, and he said, should have said weight instead of age, that makes more sense. Oh, yeah, we did do it by weight. Um, and just a comment about um, really the soft nudges with the human, human factors approach um, about resetting the default orders um, to a lesser or shorter duration, so that was a comment. Yeah, we thought that would be really helpful because they, you know, we in the urgent cares are very, very busy, um, and so we felt that any anything that made it easier um, would be appreciated and probably would give us, um, you know, pretty good bang for our buck. Fantastic. Any other questions from the audience before we move on to our student presentations? All right, great. Thank you so much for your presentation and for your work.